Hi everyone, I have something special for you today. Today we'll be, we will be talking with Matt Nori from Haverhill, Mass. Matt owns Merrimack Valley Junk Removal and is just about wrapping up his service industry coaching program with me. So I wanted to have him on today because he's having some pretty remarkable results while he was in the program and I thought it would be awesome to share his story. So welcome, Matt. Hey. Hi, so Matt. Can you tell us a little bit about your business, um, when you founded it, and why you started it? Sure. Yep. Um, so I've been uh, doing nursing now since 2011 or so, um, uh, hospice nursing, nursing specifically for the last six or seven years. Um, and in doing that, I saw I'm always looking for opportunities to make money and, mm -hmm. uh, and also help people at the same time. But uh I started to see patients that I was caring for that were soon passing away and families kind of talking about what the next step is with the house. I have a pickup truck. I love driving my pickup truck around and I've got a small trailer. Um, so I started offering a service, a free service, in fact, um, for patients that had now passed away. And I'd offer, hey, I can come in the weekend and I can help clean out and haul stuff away. And, um, you know, all this furniture I can get donated for you. So I started making some connections there. And then it, it kind of got to a point where uh, my wife says, well, you know, Matt, you're spending almost every weekend now cleaning out and helping out people when you can do that, but you could actually get paid for it. If you set yourself up right. So she turns you on to, to that, maybe like saying, let's make some money with this. Yeah. She's saying, you know, you know, I don't mind you working as hard as you are, but you could be getting paid for what you're doing. It is a service, you know. Right. True, true. So when did you decide to seek out private coaching for your junk removal business? Um, so I did it for about kind of a year, um, just real small time stuff, not really a legitimate business. And then after launching the business, um, full scale, you know, insurance, uh, being a legitimate business, let's say, uh, I'd say six months into it, I felt very lost. Uh, yeah what? so yeah so more like you thinking about you needed direction sort of like what was the next step for you yeah it, it, it's hard you know I, I was I was going online and asking other junk removal companies including some local ones I just blindly sent them emails with questions and uh, and one of them actually called me back and said that was pretty bold uh, mm -hmm. asking all that you did and he answered my questions and great guy but um I needed some more intimate coaching something that was a little more tailored to what my thoughts were and um well, need some direction. and i'm sure that they wouldn't want to give you too much information because then you would become their competition anyways so yes yes the first <laughs> thing i did was ask ask my name <laughs> what name i'm using you are. <laughs> so how was business going for you before you decided to seek support um and you know and start working with me and what would you say are the biggest obstacles you were facing um business was okay very very still felt very much like a hobby um i was putting ads out there but they weren't professional uh i would get people that would call and and i would go out and, and look at this job and I, basically i would take anything i could get um but i realized really quickly that that those necessarily weren't my that wasn't my clientele i'm going to leave that up to the guys that don't have the insurance the big overhead the expenses um i, I wanted i wanted to chase after the realtors the whole so house. When, when you say ads, do you mean like like social media ads? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I would post something uh like personally on Facebook and on my personal page. And people that knew who I was would kind of share my, you know, my little thing and so forth. But I didn't have a Facebook business page by any means. I didn't, I didn't really even know how to use Google. Um, you know, I did Google searches and I could see other junk removal companies, but I didn't know quite how they got there. And how do they, yeah. So you didn't, you didn't really know the process of how to do it. Like you were just taking on advertising within your friends and networking small and they were referring you people like more like That's that. It. Yep. A lot of, a lot of warm handoffs from friends of friends. Right. Um, but those go away story. quickly. Like you could get one or two and then you won't get any for a couple of weeks or whatever. So it's for rent. Yeah. I could, I could go two weeks only having picked up uh, a sofa. Okay. Right. True. So what would you say? So I know you've been in my program a little over eight months now. So tell me how your experience has been so far and what do you like about it? Like or love? 
<laughs> I do. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Tell us yeah, what you well, thought about it. So, um, well, first of all, definitely being a business owner, there are times where you just kind of feel like you need to scream. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just seeing your face, honestly, and, and getting on with you. Oh, I love talking just for a few minutes about kind of what's going on. And then we take a deep dive into action steps. That was always really big for me. I'm not a very organized person. So, you know, you letting me just kind of vent for a couple minutes and then say, okay, here's what we're going to do today. Uh, and you've got it all well planned out. Um, what you're looking at, I'm looking at, you're sharing different sheets with me. Uh, and you're giving me homework at the end, things that I need to work on and be prepared for the next time we meet again. And in the beginning, I think it was a little difficult for you to get organized to get the homework done. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes, I, you know, I sometimes judging you to do that. Do that. Get that done. It needs to be done by next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes I didn't meet those goals. And you'd say, OK, let's let's I'm going to meet you where you're at. Let's let's back up a little bit. Yeah. There's, there's uh, no um, there's no cookie cutter template for this i, I know that one, is it a different level they go on a different speed they could have something personally that went on in their life or a vacation or a wedding and they couldn't get to stuff so you you just kind of have to figure out how to get back up and keep executing on the tasks i feel like yeah yeah so what would you say the major changes um have been since we started working together number one would be revenue okay um you know, I still work on it. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. Um, let me shut that off. Sorry. I still work as a nurse. And on the days that I'm working, I'm getting on average a dozen phone calls a day. And that's that's a that's a normal day. Um I started off between some weeks not making anything, and in, on my best weeks, maybe making fifteen hundred to three thousand. Um and now it's very common to get between eight and twelve thousand uh, in a week, and that's and that's working three, maybe four days doing junk that's, removal. That's a huge difference. Yeah, huge, huge difference. Um, yeah. What do you think caused that difference? Like, how did you change your marketing? Mar um, with you, Facebook Marketplace. I mean, um, Facebook in general. Yeah, I okay. gosh, I don't use Facebook Marketplace. Um, Facebook in general. So okay. having a professional appearance, that goes a long way. And I can't tell you how many customers that I go to their house and they say, beginning to end from your ads to your response time, um, you introducing me to uh, an app, you know, Jobber to be organized. CRM. Yeah, to keep you organized. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good CRM. That's absolutely important. Before that, I was just using Google Calendar. Uh, and I was and I was using my family Google Calendar with my business, kind of mixing them together. Uh, I <laughs> it was a di disaster. So there's a lot. Speak to that for a second. So there is a lot of guys that have service industry businesses that are still working just like you without a CRM. Like, can you give them any advice as far as getting on software, how it would just streamline and make their business easier? Yep. Um, so this specifically, most CRMs are kind of similar now, but you can set it up either on Facebook or um, your website on Google. So you can put these little buttons all over the place. And if somebody just clicks the button and puts just a little bit of information in, you've got it. Boom. I get a notification that somebody has requested um, a small driveway pickup. They can even put what they have on there right away. I can text them back. I can call them back. So from the point of somebody just clicking that button, Within five minutes, I've responded. I've got them booked. It's not lost revenue. It's not a missed phone call. Um, so, okay, hey, there's different levels to these. I am uh, one above the smallest level, I, I believe. And yeah, uh, the, middle, the middle, there's different levels for size. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think it was around 1100 for the year. And how many missed calls uh, and, and lost revenue I would have had without this? I mean, that's one, that could be that's one job for you. One job, yeah. So, um, and what about the, credit cards? Did you take? You couldn't take credit cards before, right? I mean, you can, but I didn't have anything set up. 
No, it was just cash or check. Um, and a lot of people like to pay with credit card. Uh, for instance, specifically this CRM I use now, um, once I close, and, and here's here's a big, this is a big tip. Using these CRMs, once you close and invoice somebody, you want a good CRM that allows you to use tips. Mm, tips, yep. Almost, so, yep. right. I would say 80% of our jobs have tips. Uh, and, uh, and on average, two to three hundred dollars in tips in a day is is not uncommon. Awesome. Uh, so the guys that are working with me, that's their, you know, you can actually pay a little less hourly because you you can hype up the fact that they're going to get these tips and they do. So and, 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 and honestly, they work harder on a job. I'm getting in the truck. I'm ready to go away. And I see them sweeping up the driveway with a broom and a shovel. Uh -huh. And smiling, smiling with the customer because they know in two minutes. They deserve those. Know, and so as far as the guys getting, you know, 80% of your clients tipping now, like, like talk about the morale for them. Like they must, that must motivate them to want to come into work because they know it they're does. getting money. Yep. Right? Yep. Because yep. they can go off and kind of do their own thing for the day of landscaping and so forth. They don't, if it, if you're not set up right, um, you kind of have to know how to, how to read the customer. You know, if, if this is a customer that I, um, they just kind of want this in and out. And I'll just say, sure, we'll take a check before we leave. That's fine. And I feel well, like if someone's paying on credit card, like they would spend more. So like you might get to the house and they might say, hey, can you take this couch? Can you take this chair? Can you take this knowing it's going on the card? So you would actually like increase your revenue right at the house. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll let them know before I come. Um, I give them just a just a brief text message that lets them know. Hey, I booked you. You probably received a message with your booking. Mm -hmm. Once we're on the job, I'll I'll give you if I haven't quoted them already, I'll quote you on site. If you're happy with it, we'll go ahead and do the job right then and there. I'll say um, we take all forms of payments, so don't worry about it. Cash, check, uh, and card. And and most people prefer to pay with that card. And sure enough, For sure. The, tips, the tips come with it. Do you think that your closing rate increased because of all the systems you've put in place? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, before I started working with you, I didn't I didn't even have my pricing down. And mm -hmm. so to stand before a customer and and have them, you know, you, you look at everything that they have going and I have to really sit there and kind of like ponder in my head. Uh, they can feel that. Um, so they're not they're not confident in you if you're not confident in yourself. So your systems probably increase your confidence in front of them. Yeah, big time. Everything is so fluid and smooth. And the last piece that they're waiting for is that price. And I prefer to do it in person. Yep. Uh, you know, and the biggest component to that is um, if there is any pushback, it gives you an opportunity to work with the customer. They've already met you. Uh, you're starting to build morale. Right, right. That's great. That's awesome. So... Who do you think would benefit from taking coaching with me, like working with me? Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say, I mean, certainly somebody who's just starting out. And again, coaching, it's a tax write-off. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. It, it takes you from being kind of willy-nilly mom and pop, not having much of a direction um, to more work than you can handle. I mean, you have to put the time in yourself, but um definitely more work than I can handle. more work than you can handle right now yeah and not just the new guys you know for instance there are some competitors in town that customers are calling me i'm not stealing the work from them customers are calling me and just simply saying hey i called another company that i've used before i found them to be really rude on the phone i'm looking for somebody else or mm -hmm. they came out and they gave me a price that was way more than they ever charged me before I don't want to work at that company anymore. And so maybe the other companies are just getting um, kind of complacent. They've been doing it for a long, long time. Uh, so I think everybody can use a fresh look at their business from an outside perspective, from somebody who has business experience. Sure. And, and, you know, you, you as, a, as an owner, you may have business experience yourself, but it would behoove them to just listen to what somebody else might have to say. Get a fresh set of eyes almost. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's certainly so many conversations I had with you that I I kind of in my head thought I had the answer. And I, I really didn't <laughs> at all. 
<laughs> I mean, there's, a, you know, a few different ways to skin a cat, but when you're doing a process that isn't working for a long period of time, you have to kind of sit back and drop the ego and just be like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Are there other ways to do this a little bit more effectively or better? Yeah. Right. So any advice for service industry business owners who are struggling or thinking about getting help? Oh, just do it. Just do it. It's so, it's so, um, just like a good CRM. If you have the right coach in place, yep. you can't go wrong. You're going to benefit. You're going to profit. Your revenue is going to increase. It's just like, it's just like hiring a business partner, essentially. Yeah. Another hard. member of the team. It's another member of the team. It's another salary, but it's, it's minute compared to what it, what it can do for your business. Compared to how you can grow your business. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, awesome. Well, thank you very much for your your little um, interview. I know you have to get back to work and stuff. I know you're pretty booked, um, but I just wanted to thank you for that and um, create the best of luck with your business. Thanks, Cheryl. All right. All right. Bye, Matt. Bye.